This is the Investor Connect podcast program. I'm Hall T. Martin. I'm the host of the show in which we interview angel investors, venture capital, family offices, private equity, and many other investors for early stage and growth companies. I hope you enjoy this episode. Investor Connect is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to the education of investors and startups for fundraising. Please consider donating $100 to the program to help others in their investor and entrepreneur journey. You can find the donate button on the InvestorConnect.org website. Hello, this is Hall Martin with Investor Connect. Today we're here with Alexander Borshaw, managing partner at Simiero Partners. Simiero Partners is an early stage venture capital firm investing in purpose driven, sustainable food and food tech companies. Alexander, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Hall. It's great to be here. Great. Well, tell us more about your background before investing in early stage companies. Yeah, so uh, I guess um, my background, I was trained actually as a chemical biological engineer at MIT, so definitely not a traditional background for investing. But uh, uh, then I spent six years in banking uh, at BNP Paribas learning about investments and more importantly, how to build long-term relationships primarily with institutional clients. And uh, it was a great experience, learned a lot, traveled. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the thing that was I was p- most passionate about was uh, food and sustainability and environmental conservation. And, and um, that's why I decided to go back and get my MBA at MIT Sloan, which had a really strong program in sustainability. Uh, that's when I started investing as an angel investor. And uh, when I uh, finished there, I was a director of finance at Italy, uh, got some great operational experience working with a fast growing startup. And, and uh, that's when I uh, was invited to join as a founding partner for, for Semiero. Great. And so what excites you right now? So it's, uh, it's been really exciting to see the amount of interest uh, globally from investors, from consumers looking at uh, sustainable food and food tech, how they can eat more sustainably. They want a greater transparency, knowing where their food comes from, the rise in alternative proteins, everything from plant-based alternatives to cultivated meat to fermented meat. Uh, this is uh, really driving a uh, increased uh, awareness and conversation about how our food and our food uh, system impacts the world we live in. Because if you think about the food industry globally, it's responsible for about a third of global greenhouse gas emissions. And everyone's really aware these days about uh, climate impact. And, and I'm actually excited that food, and the food industry is uh, front and center in how uh, not only consumers, but investors can be making an impact and driving dollars and awareness to things that can really move the needle. So that's uh, what's really exciting me now. Great. Well, you see a lot of startups and a lot of investors in your sector. What's your advice for people investing in sustainable startups? What do you tell them to do before they write that check? Yeah, there's a uh, there's a lot of excitement, and I, I'll use the word hype a bit around valuations and funding rounds and this great PR. And what I would say, you know, it's all about people. Uh, especially startups, right? You're investing in people that are going to be executing and and leading, right? And uh, unless you plan on stepping in and doing their job, you've got to really do a lot of diligence around people. And that means talking to uh, former employers, former uh, employees or people who reported to them, uh, talking to not only customers, but also uh, vendors and suppliers. Um, and I would really recommend them on just looking for uh, great people that are humble, uh, coachable, but ambitious and have a big vision. Um, and we really talk about coachability as being a key factor in, in, when looking at people and how we evaluate people. And then the second thing is looking for great businesses that are really purpose driven. And I say that because it's kind of an overused trope uh, talking about an uh, a ambitious or, or passionate founder, right? We're passionate, it gets thrown around a lot. We, we, we think that purpose-driven uh, founders and teams are, are really the ones that are going to make the world a better place. And, and that's a, a key uh, kind of a check mark for us because it's not just about trying to make a better flywheel. It's really about thinking about how we can improve uh, the world for all stakeholders. Great. And then on the other side of that table, what's your advice for people running startups in the sustainable food tech area? What do you tell them to do before they go out to raise funding? Yeah. So. Um, I'd say the, the number one thing is be authentic, right? Uh, don't try to oversell. As an investor, you know, we see a lot, a lot of pitches and a lot of hockey stick J curve growth curves. Um, the ones that I'm most interested in are the ones who are more authentic and realistic and, and honest uh, uh, and sober about where they are, where they're going and, and how they're going to get there. Um, and also the ones that ask questions. They're, they're not just trying to 
I recommend not trying to share and put as much information out on the page. I, I really like the the uh, those entrepreneurs that ask questions and are curious and open um, and uh, really are thoughtful about uh, the, the feedback that they get. So, you know, in my world, you know, an example is you know, what kind of value you're creating, really. It's not about getting your groceries in 50 minutes. That's not really making the world a better place. But how you're thinking about impacting the way food is produced, um, uh, the way consumers uh, experience their food, and uh, the way consumers are educated about where their food comes from. So those are kind of the things that uh, I advise founders and entrepreneurs to think about when they're communicating to investors. Great. And so let's talk about the state of investing in food tech companies. Uh, what do you see happening here? How is the industry evolving? You know, 2021 was really a, uh, a breakout year on top of a breakout year. So we saw all-time highs in terms of uh, investing in food and food tech. You saw, a, you know, billions of dollars invested across early stage, and now you're seeing growth stage companies and even late stage companies. Uh, we're all familiar with Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat's IPO a couple of years ago really put plant-based alternatives on the map. There are hundreds of companies now that have seen that model be successful and, and are following in their footsteps, and that's really leading about the next wave of innovation in plant-based innovation. It's not just about making a burger, it's making about a crab cake or a uh, shrimp uh, alternative or a, uh, or a fish uh, or a fish fillet alternative. And, and that's, that's really where technology is, is really getting uh, interesting in the innovation technology, changing the way that food is being produced. Um, mm -hmm. uh, now you have cultivated meat startups. You see huge innovation happening in Israel and Asia uh, in, in how you can actually grow a muscle tissue in vitro um, and it have 100% no growth hormones, no antibiotics, uh, no pesticides, right? It doesn't require uh, millions of acres of land for feed. So it's a, it's a very interesting um, evolution in the way technology is being applied to food production. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, the digitalization of food as well has, has been a very uh, interesting trend. It's bringing in other investors. You're seeing you know, SoftBank investing in uh, vertical farming, ag tech startups like Plenty. Um, I'm not going to comment on the valuations and the, 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 the prices that are being paid in that space, which are, are definitely uh, frothy, but, but uh, it's just also broadening the types of investors that are investing. So now you see not only early stage VCs that are just dedicated focus to, to food and food tech, but you have more generalist uh, VCs, um, your Bessemer Ventures and, and, and Coastlas and others who are, are seeing this as a, a, a largest global industries finally getting a, 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 a an injection of technology and, 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 and uh, that's changing the, the pace of innovation in, in the space. Great. And so what do you think is the biggest change we'll see in the short term, say one to three years? Yeah, so I think um, uh, one to three years, I think you're going to see more acquisitions in the space because I'll talk about cultivated meat. Cultivated meat, I mentioned about uh, meat that's grown in, in, a, in a petri dish or in a fermenter or reactor, right? Bioreactor. Uh, what you're seeing in the next one to three years is massive investment from established uh, global meat companies, your, your Cargill's, your ADM's, um, Archer Dynamics, and Midland, um, uh, uh, your JBS's, right? And they're investing hundreds of millions of dollars in, into companies like Israel, Israel's Future Meat Technologies because, you know, globally, meat consumption, right, is, is rising as middle class uh, rises, but Consumers are becoming more and more aware of where their food comes from, and the global industrial production of meat is, is not a pretty industry, and it doesn't have a great footprint. So it, if you think about the long supply chains of having to grow feed, uh, be corn or soy in, in Brazil or the U.S., and then move it, uh, process it over thousands of miles to then feed lots for cattle, and then have to process that, and then move that meat to, to the end consumer all around the world, the future, right, is going to be about being able to produce 20, 30, 50 percent of that right in the same country, in the same city uh, uh, where those consumers are with a fraction, a tiny fraction of the footprint uh, from a, a land footprint, a water footprint, an energy footprint. Um, so I think the next one to one, three years, you're going to see a lot of money continue to be invested in cultivated meat for uh, beef, pork, uh, seafood, um, uh, uh, chicken, and, and, and that's something that's ending some of the biggest change we're going to see over the next couple of years. Right. And so let's talk about your investment thesis. What exactly is it? And what's your criteria for making an investment? Yeah. So 
Our thesis is we're looking for purpose-driven entrepreneurs in the food and food tech industries that are really just not making products that are better for people, but for the planet. And when we talk about better for the planet, we really walk the walk. We, we really measure impact. And uh, one of the easiest metrics is thinking about your carbon footprint, but also land use, water use, um, energy use. Um, and what we look for, we're focused on early stage companies that are kind of around their Series A stage. They're doing a couple million in revenue, say call it two to 15 million in revenue. And they're looking to, to grow to that next stage, right? And we're pretty a selective in the companies we invest in. We're not high volume investors. We're more low volume, high touch investors. So we really look for building relationships with founders that value our input and our expertise and our, our partnership more than the capital that we're bringing on board. And, and that takes time to develop. So that means that, you know, we don't have one intro call, maybe one follow up and, and then write a check. We tend to get to know companies and entrepreneurs over a period of many months, if not years. And that means getting to know them early. That means getting to know them when they're raising their seeds or pre-seed rounds, uh, getting to see how they communicate with investors, how coachable are they, how uh, curious and open uh, are they, how, how many questions do they ask, are they just asking, uh, just sharing information. Um, and when we look at companies, we're looking at companies that are going to be growing somewhere, their revenue somewhere around 10x uh, over the next three to five years. Um, that's kind of a good multiple. And it's very important for corporate companies that we're aligned on the plan of that subsequent round of funding because that's an important uh, milestone of, of, of survivability and success in early stage companies is how do we make sure that we hit the milestones to make sure you get the capital you need uh, for the next round of funding. Great. And can you talk about one or two startups, perhaps a portfolio company that fit that thesis? Yeah, um, I, I definitely can. So uh, we uh, we invested a company out of uh, Colombia. Uh, we're actively looking at Latin, startups in Latin America called Robin Food. Robin Food is the largest cloud kitchen restaurant company in Latin America. They have operations in Colombia, Mexico, Brazil, and uh, founded by previously successful entrepreneurs with exits in, in the food tech space and, and delivery space. And, and when we think about when we met uh, uh, Jose, the founder, you know, we we were introduced and we got to know them. We had a couple of conversations. And more importantly, we saw that uh, there was a consistent execution uh, of what he said he was going to do. So when you think about the growth that he was expecting, the new stores that they were opening, right? Uh, he consistently communicated expectations in a, a realistic way and then met those expectations. And um, the mission of a Robin Food was about uh, making healthy, fresh food available and affordable to all. Uh, so that's a, a really interesting mission because it, it's not just about being healthy and fresh for people, but also about using sustainable packaging, increasing the consumption of um, uh, vegetables and plant-based uh, foods in the diet. So, um, you know, working together, we saw, okay, they were, when we started, they were doing about uh, five, 600K a month in revenue. In the last seven months, they doubled their monthly revenue to 1.3 million. Um, and that's kind of the execution and growth that we, we like to see. And, and we consistently talk on a, you know, every two to three weeks, catch up. And, and um, it's a good example where we invested initially in, in, in a safe note, uh, a, had a financing and then saw the execution and then had capital reserve follow on and invested more capital uh, in, in specific rounds. Great. So there's lots of challenges in the food tech space. What are the main challenges you find startups face when they go out to run their business? I would say the challenges in the space for startups in the food industry, uh, there's a lot of excitement around uh, anything that has a tech component. Uh, be it delivery or cultivated meat, and it pushes up the, or I would say the valuations have been pushed up in that space, which uh, a lot of investors are, are, have been chasing that, and, and, and it's a hot space to invest in. Um, that has, has, has uh, drawn the attention of investors away from some really good companies in, in other categories within the food industry, and uh, it, it's uh, consciously or unconsciously, they're, they're benchmarked against a company that's you know, raising a massive round and has a uh, huge uh, growth revenues, even though they're highly unprofitable. Um, so, you know, instant grocery delivery companies, uh, I commend them for the way they have grown. But if you think about the fundamental business model, I'm not really sure uh, how, how that is really uh, going to work and scale. And I don't know what kind of impact it's having on, on, on the world. Um, 
but they've commanded huge valuations and raised multiple rounds within one year. And, and it, uh, it leaves the other uh, startups in the space account of being compared to that. So it's a, that's, a, that's a challenge. And then on the other side of that table, what's the challenge the investor faces in this sector? Well, it, along the same lines of, of valuations being pushed up in interesting companies, a don't chasing valuations, right? You want to be part of a company, but the truth is, as an early stage investor, you know, uh, investing one, two, three, five million dollars, and our, our sweet spot's really in the you know two to five million dollar uh, initial investment, you're not getting the same percentage equity uh, when you're investing in a much higher valuation, right? So if you look at the the you know the return scenarios uh, on a potential exit or or, or, or whatnot. It's a it's a very it's a different value proposition because the the uh, the economics have changed when you know you're investing two million and you were getting you know ten uh, percent of the company uh, now you're looking at companies that are you know, raising at a you know eighty hundred million dollar valuation instead of getting ten you know, percent company you're getting anywhere between two and and, and maybe three and a half four percent of the company so it's a, it's a different uh, uh, equation so. That's been a, a challenge in, in certain spaces where we want to deploy capital, but just finding the right uh, partner and the, the, the right price. Great. Well, you see a lot of different sectors and applications in the food tech space. If you had to pick one or two opportunities that are good to pursue today, what would you call out? One space that we uh, were, we've deployed capital significantly from fund one and now from fund two is in the plant-based alternative space. We think that uh, that is going to continue to be an interesting space. And and really, the next wave of innovation in that space, uh, it, it's uh, like I mentioned, it's, it's not just about a, a, a burger that is made from plants that tastes almost similar to something that might be meat. Um, excuse me. It's, a, it's about getting all those other form factors, um, uh, sausages, uh, links, crumbles, um, crab cakes, uh, fish fillets, but also, most importantly, getting the, the, the experience for the consumer to be identical or even better with a product that's actually healthier for them. So using uh, whole plants, uh, plant-based foods, not highly processed foods um, with a bunch of additives, but actually making it a healthier and better experience for the consumer. That's the kind of innovation we're seeing. Uh, we call it version 2.0 and 3.0 in plant-based alternatives. And the other one I mentioned earlier is about cultivated meats. I, I think over the next three to five years, it's gonna be mm. a game changer. Um, there's a lot, a lot of, uh, uh, room to grow and, and a lot to come down the cost curves and also the scale of production but you're already seeing uh just uh, having their plant uh, their cultivated chicken nuggets approved for the market in singapore singapore has been a uh forward-thinking uh innovative regulator and, and the first to approve a cultivated meat product in the market you're going to see uh, the us and europe uh, probably 12 to 18 months behind that and uh that's another really exciting space that i see great well, in the last few minutes that we have here, what else should we cover that we haven't? So, you know, uh, from an investor perspective, uh, we talked a lot about food and food tech and how excited we are about it and impact and sustainability. I wonder, you know, what percentage of investors out there, be it family offices or institutions, actually have exposure to, to food and, and sustainable food in, in its industry. Um, if you think about it, it's a $7 trillion industry globally, but I would say that most investors don't have much exposure to it. Um, and it's one of the ones that are changing most rapidly. And if there's one thing that we try to do at least two, maybe three, sometimes more times a day, it's eat food. So I think it's something that we, uh, I, I think getting more exposure in portfolios to, to food is uh, something that all investors should be thinking. So how best for listeners to get back in touch with you? Well, they can email me at alex at semieropartners.com. And that's semiero with two L's. Um, that's the best way to get get uh, through to me. And then also happy uh, if you log into our website, check our website, semiopartners.com. You can, there's a form for you to fill out as well. Great. We'll include that in the show notes. I want to thank you for joining us today and hope to have you back for a follow-up soon. it be my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me, Hall. Investor Connect helps investors interested in startup funding. In this podcast series, experienced investors share their experience and advice. You can learn more at investorconnect.org. 
Paul T. Martin is the director of Investor Connect, which is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to the education of investors for early stage funding. All opinions expressed by Hall and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Investor Connect. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions.